Ovaj razgovor vodimo neposredno nakon Berlinskog samita Evropske unije i zemalja regiona. Zanima me koje ste utiske poneli iz Berlina? First of all, I might say that what I was expecting was not more than what we got. In the sense that we went there and it was very important that both the Chancellor and the President of France organized it together because it shows special attention and also a certain renewed will to deal with the region, to address issues of regional cooperation, and also to focus on one of the most uh, important and uh, tricky issues of nowadays, the dialogue between uh, Kosovo and Serbia. So somehow maybe other people expected the summit to solve all the problems, I didn't. And uh, in the same time, it was, uh, in my view, very fruitful because uh, it uh, created a new momentum and uh, the pledge to have, a, as the President of France put it, a return match uh, on the 1st of July in Paris is very important. To će biti sastanak u nešto užem obimu, ali mene zanima, nakon ovoga što ste rekli da ste dobili tačno ono što ste očekivali. Zanima me zapravo taj vaš odnos prema gospodinu Ramušu Haradinaju, koji je bio vidljiv i tamo, i naročito nakon vašeg povratka u domovinu. Dakle, vi ste otvoreno rekli da je gospodin Haradinaj lagao u Berlinu. U vezi sa taksama, zato što je on... On se zapravo žalio kako je bio pod velikim pritiskom i kancelarke Merkel i predsjednika Makrona, ali i gospodina Tačija i vas naročito, da se takse suspenduju. Onda ste vi otvoreno rekli da je on lagao, da takvih pritisaka nije bilo u Berlinu. Now, I somehow felt strange, but at the same time okay, because... I was uh, labeled from both sides like doing something wrong. I was labeled from uh, my friend uh, Ramush uh, and also from uh, the others in Belgrade. So it means to me I was in the right place because uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, no one and uh, nor the Chancellor, either uh, the President, and not at all myself was advocating about uh, getting rid of a tax, but simply spending it to give, That's what uh, I said. To give a, a chance to a new, uh, let's say, chapter of the dialogue where they both the Chancellor and the President pledged to participate directly and Germany and France to be involved uh, much more than in the past. So, I, did, I didn't hear this, but... Uh, it was yesterday. Yeah, I didn't hear this, but uh, I don't think... Uh, it's important in this uh, moment we are talking about the summit because what was to me very important uh, in this uh, Berlin summit was uh, exactly what I said, uh, a renewed will from both Germany and France through the President and Chancellor to get more uh, involved in a process that uh, somehow has uh, been blocked for a certain time. So this was a great opportunity, and the fact that there is an, uh, there is an, uh, a space that has been created is a good thing. Vratit ćemo se na pitanje Kosova i Metohije nešto kasnije, ali sada bih volala da ostanemo u Berlinu i da se pozabavimo pitanjem Evropske unije, jer evo nas 
na 20. dana pred izbore za formiranje nove administracije u Briselu. Šta očekujete od tih izbora? Kako vidite Evropu nakon 26. maja? About the EU, I have, since some time now, the sense that it will get worse before it will get better. So, uh, Why? Uh, there, is a, there is a period in the EU that uh, it's not exactly uh, what we would wish and uh, what the pro-European people and forces would wish. But at the same time, uh, we can't change it. Uh, we have to live with it. Unfortunately, uh, the decisions about us in the EU depend less and less from what we do and more and more from what their problems are in the moment they take a decision. But uh, on the other hand, uh, it's understandable that the EU needs to reform, that EU cannot go on like this. And what's happening is, the, in my view, the expression of many frustrations and uh, of many, uh, let's say, um, fragilities that uh, has been more and more visible to the people, not because the project of the European Union is wrong, but because the project is not completed. So I think it's a, we live in a phase of uh, crisis within the European Union that uh, will define somehow the future and uh, I am, in that regard, optimistic that uh, things will get better, but before will get worse. Zanima me nešto na što ni ne morate odgovoriti ako ne želite. Šta očekujete od Evropske unije ako, recimo, vaš sadašnji holandski kolega bude izabran za predsednika Evropske komisije, gospodin Mark Rutte? No, I can answer. Mark Rutte is a great guy. It's an amazing talent of politics. It's not by coincidence that uh, he's there since uh, quite a long time as prime minister. He's a very navigated politician and uh, also he is uh, European. Why now, I'm hearing a little but? No, no, <laughs> I didn't say but. Now, whoever, whoever will be uh, in the head of the of the European Union um, in the next four years, we'll have to deal with this particular difficult uh, moment of the European Union. And um, I would very much like Mark to be there because, uh, as I said, he is, uh, he's an amazing politician. And he's European, by no doubt. Da li ste očekivali nakon Brexita da će veliku evropsku trojku da čine upravo Francuska, Nemačka naravno i Holandija, umesto recimo Nemačke, Francuske i Italije? Who knows? The thing about the European Union today is that you don't know what will happen tomorrow. And they apparently don't know themselves. So I very much hope that the sense of history will prevail because I strongly believe that uh, getting out of the European Union is somehow getting out of history and abandoning this project is somehow going very much backwards. You're talking about United Kingdom right now. No, no, I'm talking about, I'm talking about all the forces uh, within the European Union that are supporting the idea of uh, getting out, that are supporting the idea of uh, uh, closing the doors, that are, are, are supporting the idea of abandoning the project. The project is so visionary and is so amazing, and uh, I think it's uh, together with the uh, United States uh, project is uh, the most amazing project human beings have imagined to, for, for themselves in terms of politics. So uh, the question is, how long will it take to see it uh, accomplished in one way or the other, and how much we'll have to, to suffer and to live with the frustration of uh, this transition, this transition between what the European Union achieved but in the same time uh, couldn't achieve and what the European Union should achieve in the future. Jedino logično pitanje nakon ove priče o Evropi je kako vidite region u budućnosti? 
my vision about the region has always been, uh, or let's say since long time, been the same, and uh, it doesn't change. Uh, the region should move uh, by itself and for itself in parallel. So we should not wait uh, the day to uh, when we'll become members to uh, create a better environment for ourselves and uh, for our people within the region. There are so many things we could have done and we could do together to create in this region a different type of space for everyone and to live in this region like we are supposed to live in the European Union, without borders, for example. To adopt, without waiting uh, years, uh, our own model of borders based on the Schengen model, to move freely, to not have 1,100 years of waiting time every year in our borders. This is an official statistics from uh, uh, someone that looked to it uh, in the World Bank, and uh, to make sure that uh, trade and cooperation and uh, investments and uh, culture and everything is uh, connected. So we can do it. And uh, we should not wait for the moment that we'll be members of the European Union. And uh, we should work in parallel. So if Europe, the Union, need to reform itself, we need to reform ourselves. And uh, there are some good things that we have started. Unfortunately, we didn't succeed to go faster. And uh, we are seeing that we are, time after time, uh, finding uh, ourselves uh, in front of obstacles. And uh, we are realizing that the obstacles, it's again ourselves. Da li ste mi divan uvod za sledeće pitanje? Govorite o otvorenim granicama i o transportu roba, ljudi, kulture, svega toga što ste naveli. Kako se u tu priču uklapaju ove takse koje su privremene vlasti na Kosovo i Metohiji uvele prema robi iz uže Srbije i da ne budemo nepravedni prema robi iz Bosne i Hercegovine? Let's face it, uh, the tax uh, that has been uh, adopted by the Kosovo government is not a trade measure. It's a political scream. Uh, it's a political scream to make everyone here... It's a political scream from 19th century, that not 21st. No, I would say no, because... Uh, it's uh, from uh, from uh, 99 that uh, Kosovo is free, is independent, and recognized by uh, the major powers of the democratic world as a such. And uh, in the same time, uh, Kosovo has embarked in a process of dialogue, which is very painful for them because, uh, again, let's face it, uh, uh, Albanians in Kosovo were victims of uh, something that was uh, nearly genocidal and were victims of an ethnic cleansing under a dictatorship in Belgrade. So, again, they embarked in this process. They engaged to find out a way through dialogue. They didn't really put conditions for that. They didn't, for example, condition that with uh, an apology or with uh, whatever else the victims can rightly expect. And uh, it didn't work well for them. It didn't work well for them, to say the least. So we need to find a way out, and uh, we need to take our lessons from this deadlock because uh, we should not take for granted that what we had cannot come back. And we should fight for the future because we cannot hurry to our new young generations the conflict that was inherited to us from the past generations. It's a kind of, uh, we are in the crossroads. And I am not, I'm not among them who uh, naively believe in the European Union that conflict is over. 
Uh, and either among them that uh, think that we can solve things through, through conflict. Uh, I believe that this needs to be addressed as a, as a frozen conf conflict that has to disappear. So the tax is a political scream I have supported to make sure that things uh, go further. And that's why I advocated uh, the same as the French president, as the German chancellor, that the suspension is something that uh, could be done exactly because a chance was there. And uh, then, of course, uh, the tax could go back if nothing would have happened. So uh, I think it's not easy to understand from the Serbian side, but I can easily understand that uh, this is something for which uh, the Serbian side should not try and find the reason just in the other, but also try and find some reasons within itself. I will, of course, take into account that you are, first of all, a great artist and a good sportist and a politician, of course, but the terms of genocide and the rest are not used so easily. And I will ask you another question. Šta se dogodilo sa Edi Ramom koji je postojao na evropskoj sceni do Sofijskog samita prošle godine? Ako se ne varam, vi me ispravite. I sa Edi Ramom koji danas govori. Do Sofijskog samita vi ste vrlo čvrsto se držali evropskog puta Albanije i govorili o tome da će svi biti jedinstveni u jedinjenoj Evropi. Od Sofijskog samita na ovamo, vi se sve više služite veliko-albanskom terminologijom. Je li to iz političkih razloga ili prosto tako osjećate? Ja, znam veliko 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 srbijan srbija i među njim znam što je veliki. Velika. Ne znam velika u nekog, samo u moj hrvijek. I znam da je to što je to što je to što je. No, I don't think I am a different person. I am the same person. I have strongly advocated for a new era in the Albanian-Serbian relation. I've always thought, and I still believe, that uh, Serbs and Albanians can do for the Balkans what French and Germans did for Europe. I strongly believe that we owe to our next generations exactly that, the creation of the foundation of uh, never lasting peace and uh, the, f the definite end of the conflict. Uh, I've, never, I've never spoke about Greater Albania, and by the way, uh, thank you for asking, Greater Albania is a notion that has been created, promoted, uh, commented, and used against the Albanians by them who were on uh, the other side of, uh, of the war trenches uh, in the history. So there is no greater Albania in uh, any, let's say, Albanian uh, romanticism or even, uh, you know, uh, Renaissance or before and after. There is a clear, there is a clear, uh, you know, imagination that uh, we are brothers that live in two different states today. And we should unite. For sure you should unite. Now, I've always seen this unification as part of our path towards uh, the European Union. And if there is one thing that is greater, is a greater European Union uh, in my imagination and in my in my conviction. So, um, all this being said, I reiterate everything I've said about, uh, about Albania and Serbia, Albanians and Serbs, but at the same time, I have said and I continue to say that, uh, that Serbia need to face reality and need to recognize uh, reality that Kosovo is uh, an independent, free state. 
And of course, uh, the need to settle is unavoidable. And more Serbia continue to live in this kind of dream that this has not happened or this uh, will be prevented to happen, more will be painful for everyone. So this is what I've always thought. Ja priznajem da je to mišljenje ogromne većine Albanaca, ali ako je to zaista tako, zašto se onda traži od Srbije bilo kakvo priznanje ili to je prosto činjenica i koga briga za mišljenje Srbije. Ali ja moram da vas podsjetim na jednu vašu izjavu još 18. aprila 2015. u intervju za Sky News. Ponovo ste govorili o ujedinjenju Albanije i samoproglašenog Kosova, citiram. Rekao sam da je ujedinjenje za nas nešto neizbežno i neupitno i dogodit će se na putu ka Evropi, kako ja smatram. Međutim, kasnije, pogotovo posle Sofijskog samita, iznali ste dve opcije ujedinjenja. Prva je ta, ujedinjenje u okviru Evropske unije, a druga je integracija sa Kosovom, na koji će dve zemlje biti prinuđene na klasičan način ako Evropa zatvori svoje vrata. Ja, ja ne znam to. Najesto hear that. I can understand this because uh, I have had to deal uh, many times with this question. And again, uh, I can repeat it. But uh, there is one thing that should be corrected in the interpretation that I wanted to say, and I want to say, that if there is no future for our people, for our countries, but not only for Albanians, in the European Union, in uh, a family of countries where peace is uh, the foundation, of course, people may go backwards and find what at that time I called the classical way, but it's not my way, it was not my wish, it's not why, what I predicate, it's not what I would do. But I would simply say that this is fact, that the risk is always there. So let me say to you, it to you in a different way. What Jean-Claude Juncker from Luxembourg wanted to say when he said for the Balkans, or there is the European Union, or there is war. Meaning? I don't know, maybe we should ask him. No, I can answer you. Meaning, in my view, or there is a path we construct together for a better future, where we find together united for bigger purposes and in a space of freedom and cooperation, or we'll go backwards. And what has produced the wars in the Balkans? The same thing, fighting for eliminating the other. So my grandmother used to say, uh, used to say that uh, there is no happy house with unhappy neighbors. So we should work really seriously and with uh, a vision to avoid what in the past has burned our houses, trying to burn the other's house. Ono što mi interesuje je, pošto čujem negde u pozadini, ispod radara zapravo, neku vrstu ljutnje na Evropsku uniju, Verovatno zbog toga što još uvek nisu otvoreni pregovori za pristup ni vama, a ni Severnoj Makedoniji, iako se to očekivalo jako brzo. Da li je zapravo ovaj nov vaš stav prema ujedinjenju sa Kosovom i Metohijom, odnosno neka vrsta odustajanja od onog čvrstog evropskog puta, zapravo proizvod te ljutnje koju osjećate prema tome što još uvek nisu započeli ti pregovori sa Albanijom? You insist in a new position of mine. I have no new position. I have always thought and I 
still think. I was only listening. I still think to that uh, that yes, we need to we need to unify in the path of the European Union, and we need to make our borders irrelevant, and we need to to have chances to organize uh, in a totally different way, and to live for this prosperity and uh, for the common good but not only between us Albanians, between everyone. So I don't have a new position. What I have tried to say and what I repeated today is that we should not forget that the frozen conflict can be defreezed and can bring us back to nightmares as can be eliminated and push us forward to a much better future. So it's not anger. I, I'm not angry uh, about. I'm not angry, but not disappointed because I understand that this is not about us. This is not because of us. This is about them. This is about the European Union uh, being in a very difficult period. So, at the end of the day, I strongly believe that uh, what we do, uh, and not only us, but every country that is embarked in this process. It's not because some people in Brussels are asking us to do or because in Berlin or in Paris they want us to be a good guys and we want to show that we are good guys. No, we do it for our kids. Uh, justice reform. Uh, it means to have a better uh, justice system. It means to have a better country tomorrow. Uh, fighting all the bad things and creating new functioning institutions. It's about us. It's about our states. It's about modernizing our countries. So it's a process that is unique in itself to help countries move forward, and especially countries like ours, which frankly have no great tradition of institutions and of mechanisms that work by itself. So there's no anger. Uh, simply, we have to live with this Balkan curse, I would say, that when we were, when they were in very good shape, we were in a very bad shape. Now that, that we are in a better shape, they are in a bad shape. So we need the moment that uh, will be good on both sides and we will be together. So for the time being, we want to open the negotiations, not because we want a gift or, a, or, or because uh, we want an indulgence, but because we deserve it. And at the end of the day, what they are giving to us, it doesn't cost anything to them in terms of finance. It simply helps us to continue the cure of modernization, to uh, continue and build the institutions and uh, give the final form to a state that can be ready to become part of the Union. I hope that I won't be able to get back to this European story here, in Tirana. Uh, zašto se u poslednje vreme u albanskim medijima, ali i u medijima u regionu, sve više spominje ime Ljuljzima Baše kao nekog ko može da vas zameni na, na mesto na kome ste sada? Well, you have to ask uh, the media. As uh, for me, I, I, have a, I have a rule. I never speak about my friends in opposition in a foreign language. So uh, <laughs> you would apologize me, but I don't comment on on our opposition uh, with uh, foreign journalists because I think that this is something we uh, have to deal here with each other first. Second, because I know that uh, uh, with all due respect, foreign journalists, foreign media cannot go in depth about, uh, okay. about what we have here, cannot fully understand what happens. And, we don't uh, have the full knowledge of it. Natural, yes. natural. And of course, you know, I know also for a fact that uh, uh, when you are, when you protest and when you threat to spill some blood, all the media is interested. When you do uh, things that uh, can be great for the country, it's not, it's not a news of interest for international media. So. I don't comment. I think I think we are we are a growing a growing uh, democracy, not yet uh, a mature one. We have, uh, and not only here. Look uh, at Serbia. 
look at Montenegro, look uh, elsewhere. So we need to learn in the hard way, as always in the Balkans, the rules and uh, the norms of living together in a democracy where someone has to win, someone has to lose, someone has to govern, someone has to be in opposition, someone has to, has to lead, someone has to follow. If I understand it well, if I don't say it, you think that this currently position is autochtono albansko Dakle, bez ikakvog pomoći sa strane, sa strane nekog iz Albanije ili sa strane nekog iz neke druge zemlje, ni u finansijskom, ni u organizacijonom smislu. I don't comment on my opposition uh, especially, but uh, I would say that, uh, for example, uh, we have uh, today in the Balkans uh, oppositions that are in boycott. Uh, boycott is not something that Germans or French or Dutch or uh, other uh, to democracies... To je ono što su oni za 30. jun kada su zakazani lokalni izbori. No, no, I'm talking about boycott in the parliament. I'm talking I'm about... in parliament, yes. So, this, this, is, this is something that uh, has, has become a tradition in our countries, which shows that we are young and not yet mature democracies. Uh, now there is something new here that there is... Uh, there is uh, also the so-called burning of mandates, which is new, never happened in the Balkans. I hope it will not spread uh, in, in the other countries because it's really uh, very self-inflicting and uh, suicidal in my view. And uh, yes, uh, boycotting the local elections is not the first time. We have seen it in other countries in the region and it has always shown to be uh, self-inflicting and uh, somehow suicidal politically for them who engage in, in this kind of uh, uh, abandoning the, uh, of the elections. But this is, uh, this is a part of a precise period of history. And listen, you know, 30 years are a lot on ourselves. You know, 30 years before when we, when we were in the streets we were in the streets to like fight communism. I had all my hairs. But uh, 30 years in history are a fraction, so... Zanima me još nešto uh, oko, oko um, vašeg odnosa prema Kosovo i Metohi. Um, vi ste uspostavili na uh, svečanoj sednici uh, parlamenta u Prištini prošle godine. Vi ste... Uh, doneli nekoliko deklaracija i, i zajedničkih odluka koje se tiču boga mi i spoljne politike, a i bezbednostnih nekih uh, uh, mera. Uh, koliko je to i najavili, naravno, ono što se dogodilo u januaru, to je ukidanje izvesnih graničnih procedura sa susednim zemljama, pre svega sa Srbijom na, na, na teritoriji Kosova i Metohije. Koliko se to uklapa u, u, u uh, you give me you give me more more weight and more importance than I have, frankly. Uh, what I what I said during the celebration of the tenth anniversary uh, in Parliament, uh, it was uh, simply that uh, um, I tried to imagine where we would be ten years later by starting from where we were 10 years before. And frankly, 10 years before, we were uh, somewhere that no one, 20 years before, that no one would believe. No one would believe that one day uh, Kosovo would have its own parliament, its own government, uh, it would be... Uh, so from this assumption, I tried to just share my imagination. And uh, we have to wait 10 years. It's not long, but it was not nor a provocation, either a project, it was just an imagination. And uh, there is one thing that I said that nobody wanted to, to take uh, when commented. I said that the conflict with Serbia will be over, will be leaving shoulder to shoulder, or something like this, hand to hand, 
like very good neighbors. So this is a presumptive phrase that followed my imagination that we'll, we might have a common foreign policy and one president. So this was what I said based on how much history surprised us starting from 20 years before. So uh, nothing guilty, just, just a very genuine uh, imagination about uh, a region where every, everyone would have his place and no one will, will be looking what Edi Rama said, what Edi Rama think, what Edi Rama is imagining about this greater whatever. No, I don't think it would, it would disturb the Serbs at that time if we would have a common foreign policy. I don't think so. They would be in their own uh, fantastic path uh, towards a great future like everyone. Mediji u Srbiji, ali i, i šire, su već objavili uh, saopštenje uh, partije gospodina Albina Kortija uh, o tome da će tražiti od Albanije, od vas, da proglasite za persone non grata predsednika Vučića i predsednika predsedništva Bosne i Hercegovine, gospodina Milorada Dodika, i da ih ne primite sada na, na samitu Brda Brioni, devetog, znači kroz par dana ovde u Tirani. Kakav je vaš stav prema tome? It's a free country. Everyone has the right to uh, protest and to advocate uh, everything uh, that uh, might think that is, uh, that is uh, right. But, uh, of course, uh, this summit organized by the president has as guests the president of Serbia, the president of Bosnia and Herzegovina, they are welcomed. And uh, we have uh, a paragraph in our first constitution, if I may call it, our canon. The house of the Albanian is of the God and of the guest. So uh, it's, a free, it's a free country. I'm very happy we are like this. Uh, I heard, and you will say politics again, that uh, someone uh, cooking bread in Belgrade was expelled because he made the sign of this. No, and this is our, expelled. this is our, our this is our uh, symbol, which doesn't mean anything bad for the others. It's just our symbol that recognize that to recognize each other. I heard that yes. was expelled, and because no, I saw no, this colleague, he, saw this colleague of yours making the same. A little but, bakery still in Belgrade, and nothing is happening. Good. So uh, I, I, I'm happy to hear that. But um, yes, it's not uh, a problem. We are, for example, so in, a, in, another, me, in another, in another, in another, if I in another come neighbor here country, and show like this, nothing will happen to me. To you? Yes. No way. If something would happen to you, I would run and would protect you. <laughs> no. I would like to this see This country that. respects uh, every, of course, you know, there are, all, there are also, you know, things that maybe one would, would not like to happen, but as far as Albanians are concerned, everyone that lands here is welcomed and protected. It's our history. That would be. And this is not politics. This is yes, truth. Yes, I know. Čula sam takođe da imate izvesnih problema zbog svojih viđenja sa predsednikom Srbije Aleksandrom Vučićem i sa relativno pristojnim odnosima koje imate sa njim. Je li to tačno? Oh, yes. I, I am a traitor for someone, someone or for some people because I have a normal relation with him and because uh, I have called him a friend sometimes, but I have nothing to do. These people cannot be cured. So uh, I uh, think that there is one thing very precious to me, but also very clear in our relation, that uh, we have agreed to disagree on what we disagree, but to discuss 
uh, in very open and in a very friendly manner and to live with our disagreements. Kada ćete privatno doći u Beograd, u jedinu pravu metropolu ovde na Balkanu, da je još bolje upoznate i da se negde dobro provedete? No, I, I, first of all, I, I, I can tell you that uh, I don't know I don't know much about Belgrade, but uh, I've seen it uh, twice. You uh, once, uh, or more than twice, but in two different times, let's say. Once, uh, when I was an artist, long, long time ago, and once when I came to visit um, the then prime minister and the actual president, and uh, it has changed a lot. It has changed a lot. Uh, Tirana has changed a lot. So. Uh, there is no, there is no jealousy here, and there is no uh, real, uh, real uh, competition in terms of. No, I don't like see, no. I don't see, um, with anything else but with admiration and with pleasure, everything good happening around, and everything good neighbors are building. So uh, you don't provoke me with the. Uh, the only metropolis of the Balkans, and uh, I can tell I can tell you that I no no I know I know but just I'm uh, I'm answering uh, in totally good heart so you don't provoke me with that and uh, on the contrary I would be very much happy to come anytime and uh, I very much hope that uh, soon soon uh, will be finally in another place altogether and will have left behind this burden of history uh, after you, Serbia, not you, Serbia, would have recognized uh, fully Kosovo through a peace deal that is needed and uh, of which I am a big supporter. And uh, of course, you know, the kids uh, both uh, from Albanian families and from Serbian families do not deserve, do not deserve to continue and have this uh, burden while their friends in Europe are are running, are running and running. So we need to help the kids run, not just stay stuck in something that has to do with uh, many mistakes and uh, many bloodshed of the past. Jednom političar uvek političar. Ja sam zaista pokušala da vam postavim jedno pitanje sa ljudskim likom, ali vi ste i to uspeli da pretvorite u politiku. No, nema veze. Evo poslednje... I know, I know, I know, I know. Unfortunately, you are right. Unfortunately, you are right. I poslednje pitanje, neću vas više gnjaviti, je sve više Srba zaista dolazi u Albaniju. Šta biste im preporučili? Gde da odu? Šta da vide? I remember when we organized the very first visit of this kids... Uh, Serbian kids coming to Albania and uh, it happened to be during this crazy return match of the game uh, between uh, between Serbia and Albania football match football match yes. yes and the great thing was that these kids were so amazed that everything was similar but the language so I know that uh, people that come from there here feel at home in the sense of uh, everything feels familiar and the same for people from here going there. So that's why I want a region with no borders. That's why I want uh, no border with Kosovo, no border with Montenegro, no border with Macedonia, no border with Serbia. We should work for it. We should make it happen. Others will do it in the future, but if we'll do it, the pride will be with us. If we'll not do it, the shame will be politics ours. Politics again. <laughs> yeah, politics at the end. Politics at the beginning. Politics all the time, unfortunately. Hvala vam najlepše na izdvojenom vremenu i na ovom razgovoru. Nadam se da ćemo ga ponoviti.